Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper. I am a huge fan of Blue Eddy power stations. I personally own four of them, actually five, and the Elite 200 makes six. But when Blue Eddy reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in testing the Charger 2, I could not hold back. The Charger 2 is the latest Charger from Blue Eddy. They've already got the Charger 1, but this unit solves all charger problems and all power station problems because when you have a large power station like the elite 200 and this is a 2073 watt hour battery so it's a really large battery that can do a lot but the weak link with charger stations has always been the charger because you are limited as to how quickly you can charge it and where you can charge it if you took a unit like this and plugged it into your car a cigarette lighter would it charge yes but it would probably take you several days with the Charger 2, and we're gonna dive into this and we're gonna actually hook it up and show you how it charges the Blue Eddy. With the Charger 2, you can charge at a combined power output of 1200 watts. That's combined with your alternator, the DC, and the end solar coming in. So 1200 watts combined alternator and solar. Absolute game changer. And just to talk about the Elite 200 V2 just for a moment, this unit, I have the AC200L for comparison, and it is significantly larger than this. This has the same amount of power, actually a little bit more than the AC200L, and this unit is smaller, more compact. You've got four AC outlets, you've got a DC input, you've got a cigarette style type outlet, uh, you've got two USB-Cs and two USB-As. This thing is a rock star. I'm actually planning a trip to Yellowstone early next year where I'm gonna be driving my 20 year old Jeep Wrangler for a combined almost 6,000 miles and the Elite 200 and the Charger 2 are going to be with me the whole journey. So right now I wanna go over the Elite 200 V2 but I know you guys can't get enough of the Charger 2 so real quick sneak peek, we're just gonna pull it up in front of the camera so you can see this. It is an absolutely awesome design. We've got the power button right here. I will put a graphic up on the screen so you can actually read this label a little bit more clearly, but basically it says PV for photovoltaic input. We've got 13 to 50 volts, 20 amps, 600 watts. Charge output is going to be 12 volts to 56 volts, 24 amps or 1200 watts. The DC panel output is 40 volts to 58 volts. And then we've got bi-directional, uh, alternator 800 watts, battery 1000 watts, 51.2 volts, roughly 19.5 amps. Okay, I'm just gonna throw a graphic up on the screen to show you the bottom of the unit. We've got D plus, and D plus is basically, it connects to a circuit on your car so that the unit knows when the engine is running, and that's when this is gonna activate. We've got heavy inputs here for the alternator. We've got charge, photovoltaic, DC panel. We've got two, I don't know if these are RJ45 or Cat5s, and I'm not 100% sure uh, how those operate. I'll have to look into that. And then we've got uh, two more terminals for the battery. So the Charger 2, really, really, really cool unit. We are gonna test this out fully. Uh, moving back to the Elite 200 V2, for those of you that are not familiar with this unit or have maybe not seen it before, let me just uh, adjust my camera a little bit. This basically is a newer model of the AC200L, and I have the AC200L and I absolutely love it but this is even better. On the front, we've got a DC photovoltaic input. This can do 12 to 60 volts, up to 1,000 watts, standard car charger. I like these buttons. These actually are kind of rubber coated and they have a nice tactile feel when you press them. Power is the center, DC, AC, two USB-Cs, two USB-As, and four 20 amp sockets, AC sockets. So the side, Blue Eddy does this excellent. It takes your standard computer type AC input plug. You don't need any proprietary adapter. If you wanna ground it, it's got a place for a grounding lug and you've got your standard reset right here. Okay, we're plugged in and charging. We're pulling in 795 watts. What I really like about the Blue Eddy units is that you can adjust the charging speed. You can do what's called silent, normal, or turbo, and that will adjust how the input wattage is. I always like to stay a little bit lower. We're gonna stay at 797 watts. In about two hours, we're gonna be fully charged. You know what, while we're charging, I just wanted to take a moment to take the AC180, which I also own, and I own the AC180P, and put it on the table next to the Elite 200 V2, just so you could see, these are literally almost the same size. The V2 is up on a, a turntable right now, but 
they're basically almost the same size, except the V2 has managed to double the battery capacity in a unit that is physically almost the same size as the AC-180. That is how much I love Blue Eddy products, that they are so innovative that they have been able to double the capacity in a unit that's almost the exact same size. So I just wanted to point that out. One area though where the similarities are not the same is the screen. On the AC-180, I always did like the screen. It's a nice one. But the Elite 200, the screen is just significantly brighter. It's larger. It's just much nicer graphics. They Okay, so I'm actually using the AC-180 right now to charge the Elite 200 because I want to cycle the battery on the AC-180. It's been a while. But let me share my screen here so you can see the Blue Eddy app. I'm going to click on the Elite 200. We're going to pull that right up on the screen here. And it shows us really quickly the state of charge of the battery in the dead center is 37%. We can see on the right side that we're pulling in 799 watts from the grid or the AC input. Uh, we're outputting nothing on DC. We're outputting nothing on AC. Uh, very, very easy to use app. At the very bottom, it shows us an hour and 52 minutes until we are fully charged. I'm just going to click into the setting mode here, and you can see in charging mode where I have it on silent, that's basically the slowest. You can then go to standard or you can go to turbo to speed that up. Eco mode basically says if you're pulling less than 10 watts, it's going to turn off in, I think it's roughly uh, four hours. You can change the time on that. DC mode, the same thing. If you're pulling less than five watts, uh, it'll turn off in four hours. Okay, now the next test I want to do is a usable capacity test. This is a 2073 watt hour battery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a space heater because I want to measure how much actual power we can get out of this unit. That's one of the main reasons why I bought the unit because it had a significant amount of capacity and efficiency. So I've turned the fan on to just fan mode coming up to Level one, which is 907 watts. Level two right now, which is 1,462 watts. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna leave this on until the battery is at 0%, and then we're gonna calculate how many watt hours of power we got and roughly how long it took. According to the screen on the Blue Eddy, it says we've got 1.3 hours. Let's put that to the test. I will see you guys in 1.3 hours or when the battery is dead. Okay guys, welcome back. It is the morning. I let this discharge completely last night. It took 1,937 watts of power we were able to get into the space heater. If you do the math at a 2,073 watt hour battery, having used 1,937 watts, that is over 93% efficient. That just hit it out of the park, which is the 100% reason why I wanted the Blue Eddy Elite 200. It is just an absolute beast of a power station. And I know during my road trip that I will be able to get the maximum power out of this unit. But enough talking, I wanna take this outside now to the car. We're gonna take the Charger 2. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna hook the Charger 2 up. Okay, there's a lot of snow on the ground here in the Northeast, so we're in the garage. And the ultimate plan here is to install this in my Jeep Wrangler before my five to 6,000 mile round trip road trip to Yellowstone uh, and a few other destinations. But what I wanna do before that is I want to get this out of the box. I want to do a simulated install here in my 4Runner because I want to make sure that I know how everything works and that it's working properly before I go to do this for real in the summertime. Uh, the Jeep Wrangler right now is currently in storage. So that's why I've got to do this to the 4Runner. But this is the part I'm most excited for because I was going to pick up the Charger 1, but then when Blue Eddie reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review the Charger 2, that was an immediate, immediate yes, because like I said, I was going to buy the Charger 1. Now the Charger 2, as I indicated at the beginning of the video, really just kind of is the best of all worlds because you can take solar input as well. You get a much higher output and it's still a very small, very lightweight package, uh, which I love. Okay, so the installation is actually going to be very simple. At a later date, I will probably consider doing solar and some other options. But for the basic installation that I'm going to do in the Wrangler for the road trip, and even here for today for demonstration, is we're just going to take the heavy-duty cables and go from the alternator port of the uh, Charger 2, and we're going to connect it to the battery. And then we're going to connect in position number four, the charge cable, uh, into the Charger 2, and that's going to pigtail in or connect into the portable power station. Okay, those are some really nice heavy-duty braided cables, probably some of the nicest that I've actually ever seen uh, with the power station, let alone an alternator charger. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking off these two screws on the Charger 2. 
to expose the screws to tighten down and loosen the terminal because I'm going to go ahead and hook up the battery cables to the charger too. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the charging cables for the power station to the charger too. And then when all that is in place, I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to the car. Just hold this up to the camera so you can see a little bit better. This is where the screws are so you can tighten and loosen all of the terminals as you hook up your cables to the charger. I'm also seeing right now in the bright sunlight that there's a really nice cooling fan uh, right in there as well. Okay, so I've got the two cables in here. I've ensured that our polarity is correct. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Nice and snug. Next up, I'm gonna take this cable right here and I'm gonna connect this in to the side where it says charge, positive to positive, negative to negative because these MC4 connectors are what are going to plug into the actual Blue Eddy Elite 200. As I'm tightening this down, I mean, I think it goes without saying, but these types of chargers, these alternator chargers, are completely revolutionary because they make it so you can actually go on a road trip and not have to worry about charging your power station. I mean, solar is great and all, but if I'm gonna sit there to charge a 2,000 watt hour battery, I don't really want to sit there all day long with a million solar panels everywhere. As you're driving, you know, your alternator is spinning at a much higher uh, RPM from the engine speed, and it's not going to damage your alternator, it's not going to damage your car. I mean, you're not going to leave your power station plugged in for weeks and weeks charging. It's going to charge and then that's it. The unit's going to throttle down and turn off because you're at full charge. Don't worry about all the naysayers that you know, you're going to damage your battery, your alternator, you're not. You just have to use this like a normal person. I'm not going to sit in a parking lot idling while I'm trying to charge a 2,000 watt hour power station, I'm gonna do it as my car is moving down the freeway. All right, so I've got the unit all wired in here. We've got the battery cables connected. We've got the charging cables connected. I've got the adapter here for the MC4 to Anderson, so I can plug that in. And I've got the power station out, most importantly. Let's, now I did drain the battery back down a little bit. <clears throat> Everything is hooked up. Let's just follow the heavy cables. I do want to make one note that I did not put the inline fuse, which obviously you should absolutely do. Uh, for me, this is a temporary test to verify everything before I permanently install it in the summertime in the Wrangler. Uh, but it does come with very nice heavy duty inline fuse um, that you would hook up, obviously if this was permanent. So okay, so the Charger 2 is hooked up. Everything is working. I've tested it out and that is basically just how simple this installation is. You take your Charger 2 unit, you connect in the heavy battery cables, you connect in the input here, or I'm sorry, the output I should say, uh, so you can charge via DC photovoltaic in, connect that to your power station, then you take your heavy cables, come back, connect them into the vehicle. Now, I did off camera, just put the fuse in here just to be extra safe because that is proper procedure. Connect the positive and the negative, and you're good. Once your vehicle is running, and again, I tested this, but I am an indoor in a garage, so I don't really want to leave the vehicle running. But when the vehicle is running, what will happen is this light will come off flashing, which is indicating standby, and it's going to output power right into the Elite 200, and you're good to go. All right, guys, I hope that this video has shown you just how simple it is to hook up the charger to. It is literally two cables that you have to hook up. One set to your battery, one set to the MC4s, which go into the Anderson input. Now, I use this obviously simulated with the Elite 200 because this is the power station that I'm gonna be bringing on my road trip. But this can also charge the AC180, the AC200L. This can charge a multitude of Blue Eddy products. And I'm a big Blue Eddy fan. Obviously, this is the sixth Blue Eddy power station that I've purchased, and I'm thrilled to have the charger too. Because when you're out on the road, the number one problem you have is how are you going to recharge a power station? Again, you can use solar, obviously you can plug it into an AC outlet, but that kind of defeats the purpose of being on the road. You want to continue moving. So the Charger 2 solves all of those problems. It will charge this up incredibly fast. And like I said, in the future, I plan on coupling some solar to this, maybe on a trailer that I might be towing. The Wrangler itself is too small to put solar panels on, but if I do tow the trailer, I'll put panels on there. Um, it comes with additional cables, it comes with a smart uh, charger that, uh, or a smart adapter that comes with the charger too, so you could plug this into one of the Blue Eddy um, standalone battery packs to kind of boost this, you know, the extra battery. I don't have one of those batteries, so I don't plan on using that at the moment, but it's nice to know I have it if I should choose to buy one of those in the future. One thing that I forgot to mention when we were doing the usable capacity test, and I think it really speaks volumes and deserves to be mentioned, is I was pulling about 14, almost 1,500 watts of power from this unit continuously until the battery depleted and the unit turned off. At no point did these fans really spin up 
in a very loud, blaring way. This is actually the quietest power station that I own, and I own quite a lot of power stations. At that load, they were on, because I could put my hand here and feel the warm air, but very, very quiet. So this inverter is obviously revolutionary because of its 93% efficiency, but even more so, it does not produce that much heat. It does not require significant cooling to keep this unit in action. And I've said this before, with the probably 15 power stations that I own now, Blue Eddy is far and above my favorite brand and I would recommend them to anyone. I plan on using this. It is literally the same size as the AC-180 and I have an AC-180 and an AC-180P. And if you take two of those combined, this is just as powerful as them. I hope this was helpful. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. And if you have questions, if there's something you want to know about the Charger 2, I will be more than happy to help you and answer that question. Um, I plan on mounting this probably where the back seat is in the Wrangler, but I will do a separate video when I do mount this in the future, obviously before the road trip. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.